You knew there were civilians there. You knew there were refugees, all sorts of refugees. But you decided to still drop a bomb on that refugee camp attempting to kill the Hamas commander. The latest mass casualty event in Gaza that was in fact carried out by the Israeli Defense Forces happened at the Jabalia refugee camp where the Palestinian Health Ministry claims at least 50 people were killed. Now that was according to initial reporting, but subsequent reporting has said that the death toll has increased and we don't have an exact death toll at the moment. But it is important to keep in mind that the IDF has already taken responsibility for this airstrike, which has caused a lot of pain, death and destruction. Before we get to the response to Wolf Blitzer's question by the IDF spokesperson, I think it's important to learn more details about this airstrike by the IDF at this refugee camp in the Gaza Strip. Let's watch. At least 50 people are said to have been killed and many more injured in a blast at the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza. Well, those figures come from the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry, which also says the camp came under Israeli fire. We're yet to hear from the Israeli military. The BBC is still establishing the details. Pictures from the scene, as you can see, show people searching for survivors and pulling bodies from the rubble. Jabalia, in case viewers are wondering, is the largest of the refugee camps in the Gaza Strip, home to around 100 and 15, 120,000 people before uh, this war began, uh, packed into an area of about one and a half square kilometers. It's not tents, it's, it's buildings that have been there for decades and tightly packed streets. And we think, judging by the number of people who are there looking in the rubble to try and find bodies and survivors, there are still hundreds, maybe thousands of people still in the area. Which is part of the reason why we don't know what the exact death toll is at the moment. But I will share with you what has been reported so far. Since that report by the BBC was published, the IDF came out and took responsibility for that airstrike with absolutely no remorse given the high number of Palestinian civilian casualties. Israel claims that they were targeting a single Hamas commander and they claim that they have killed him. Although considering the backlash they're getting for this airstrike, which has killed at least dozens of civilians, I think that they would wanna put out that they accomplished their mission in killing that one Hamas commander. I'd like to see more confirmation of that from a third party. I don't really trust the IDF. They have been known to lie about these types of airstrikes in the past. Now Israeli Defense Forces on Tuesday claimed the airstrikes killed Ibrahim Biari, the commander for Hamas's Central Jabalia Battalion, along with neutralizing an estimated 50 other terrorists. Interesting, yeah. okay. Yeah, they call them terrorists because they're liars. Uh, so no one should believe the idea. No one in their right mind should believe a government's uh, like not even defense, but offensive uh, shock troops that go in and kill uh, innocent civilians thousands at a time and then claim that everyone they killed is a terrorist. When America does it, it's absurd. When Saudi Arabia does it, it's absurd. But it's not absurd when Israel does it. No, if you think that you're being enormously biased. Now they look at, here's another thing that people still claim all over the place. And I get it, it's old talking points and, and it's hard to get past old talking points, old way of thinking and identity, okay? It's just, that's just the reality. But people going around saying it's not an occupation. Well, what the hell is it? What, 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 what are all those refugee camps? Why do the Palestinians hate the Israelis so much? Oh, Because they're just generally anti-Semitic? Like having nothing to do with the fact that for 56 years, they've been living in refugee camps and in open air prisons, and they can't control their own water, power, electricity. They can't have dignity, respect for themselves at any point of bomb. Did you see the size of that bomb? We have eyes, we can see Israeli propaganda and American propaganda is not working anymore. No one is buying that crap. Other than the dumb people in Washington who think, oh, we're just gonna get everybody on cable news to say Israel is awesome and the Palestinian lives don't matter, that they're scrubby little savages and we're allowed to murder them 24 seven. It's not working, the rest of us are enraged, okay? And look at how badly it's falling apart. Even Wolf Blitzer, who basically worked for APAC, is now questioning the IDF. 
You've got Wolf Blitzer questioning the IDF. You're losing the people. You know why you're losing the people? If you're the right wing government of Israel or the current right wing government of America. I don't care what you call yourself, you're a right wing or if you're in favor of this savagery. You're losing people because you are wrong. It is an occupation, it is brutal, it is oppression. Look at the size of that crater. Well, okay, I wanna ask you guys, please be honest with yourselves, Whether no matter what side you're on. Let's say you've got a terrible guy, and I'll make it as extreme as possible, killed your family. How mad would you be? I'd be super mad. And then they say, okay, that bad guy has 50 civilians around them. Innocent people, moms, dads, kids, grandmothers. Do you murder those 50 people to get the bad guy? There's a significant portion of this country and almost the entirety of our United States government who say yes, yes, we do. The entire US government other than Rashida Tlaib and Bernie Sanders a tiny bit are saying murder, 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 murder the civilians. Because Israel has a right to defend itself by killing all those civilians. No, you don't. That's not what you have a right to defend yourself, but not by killing innocent civilians. By the way, if you don't like that fact, I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna shake your worldview, and then you're gonna hate me for it, but it is in it is inarguable. That is exactly what Hamas says. Hamas says I have a right to murder your civilians because they are pressing me. And they're, they and they we live under occupation. We can't control our borders. We can't control anything. And look at what you do to my people. You kill us at four times the rate we kill you. You kill us ten times, hundred times the rate we kill you. And we're the terrorists. And by the way, the correct answer to that is yes, they are the terrorists. But if you are four times worse than the terrorists, what does that make you? So I know these things are deeply uncomfortable. But good, good. I want to challenge you. I wanna challenge you, who are you? Are you a moral person? I would never kill 50 innocent people, no matter how mad I am, no matter the deep, how deep that injustice is, and no matter how much it affected me. I am a decent enough person to not murder 50 innocent people, let alone the 8,000 that you have killed so far. No, Jake. The 8 Thousand that you have murdered so far. I don't care what you call it. When you say, "Oh, I got 13 Hamas guys and I killed 8,000 civilians," that is not. Oops, collateral damage. Oops, there was nothing I could do. No, you purposely killed those innocent civilians. What does that make Israel? Do not let Netanyahu or the right-wing government of Israel do this to the moral fiber of Israel. Right now, the whole world is looking on with unbelievable disgust and can't believe what they're doing. It's one thing when a terrorist group does it. There's nothing we could do about a terrorist group. We're all against terrorist groups. But when a government does it- With says, our money and, and our says, It is righteous, I am moral, I murdered those people out of morality. No, you didn't, no, you didn't. And the whole world right now is going, Israel, you've got to stop. If you don't stop, this whole thing is gonna boil over. And now it's no longer just about the deep, deep immorality of the occupation. Now I'm significantly worried about Israel. The Houthis from Yemen are coming in. Are you guys nuts? You're gonna have the whole world attack you? Get rid of Netanyahu today. You're on the brink of absolute disaster. And then for the first time in my lifetime, an existential danger for Israel. Turn around as a friend and an ally, I'm telling you, you have to turn around. If you don't turn around now, you're in mortal danger. But no, go ahead, kill more, kill more, kill more, kill more, and see how that works. It's gonna work terribly, it's gonna work terribly. And it's endangering everyone inside Israel, let alone those poor, poor Palestinians. And if you don't think they're poor Palestinians, and you don't care about them, I'm sorry, but you're a terrible person. If you say innocent lives, I don't care because they're Palestinian, you're a terrible person. That's reality, if you don't like it, that's a sad day for you. So it wasn't just one airstrike, the Associated Press has more information on what happened here. They reported that at least six Israeli airstrikes hit residential dwellings in the heart 
of the refugee camp on the outskirts of Gaza City, citing the Hamas run interior ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time there's an excuse, kill hundreds, thousands of civilians. Oops, we did it again. What a mistake. No one is buying that crap. The only people that buy it are people in Washington who'd like to make more money for defense contractors and oil companies. No one else is buying that crap. The whole world is united in saying, don't do it, Israel. Don't do it, you're much stronger. Do not keep bombing those poor people. But no, go ahead, Netanyahu hasn't had enough, hasn't had enough. So he's gonna just endanger Israel and keep killing people. Now, Cenk mentioned that 8,000 Palestinians have died as a result of Israel's airstrikes and bombardment. The number has increased, at least 8,525 Palestinians have died in the violence in Gaza. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, more than 21,500 civilians have been wounded since October 7th. The ministry reported pushing hospitals to the brink of collapse. I also want to note something, I want to address something that keeps getting brought up by those who feel the need to either provide cover or defend Israel's ethnic cleansing of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. When we give you guys the number of civilians who have died, oftentimes the response to that is, no, no, don't pay attention to that. We must discredit that because the Palestinian health ministry is run by Hamas. I would just ask you all to please look back at recent instances of a fighting between the IDF and you know Hamas in Gaza. Take a look at the death toll as it was reported by the Palestinian Health Ministry, and then compare it to what various humanitarian groups reported in regard through their own analysis, through their own count, what they reported in regard to the death toll. Very similar. Very similar. So the idea that this is not credible is laughable to me when they have a history of reporting accurate numbers of civilian deaths. With that said, though, yeah, can I, just, I gotta add one thing to that. Okay. There's 6,500 specific names that the Palestinian Health Ministry released yesterday. These are the people that you killed, they're civilians, here are their names. You still wanna hide behind, Oh, we think maybe one bomb was in Israel. Maybe one bomb was in Israel. What about all the other bombs? You think there's no civilians killed in Gaza? Look, if you think that, you're so delusional that like you really like you're not seeing straight. Well, it's an admission, right? It is an admission. Because the civilian death toll is so high and it's so bad. It's an acknowledgement that it's bad. It's an acknowledgement that what the Israeli military is carrying out is the intentional targeting of civilians, you have a death toll this high. That's the reason why they're trying to deny it. Why would they deny it? Yeah. If 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 they are actually carrying out these airstrikes, keeping in mind the civilians and how to prevent as many civilian deaths as possible, okay, the death toll wouldn't be this high. So they're trying to pretend as though this is all fake because they know in their heart of hearts, they're not doing what it takes to prevent civilian deaths. And look, I'm not stupid. I understand that in the process of going after Hamas, it is a tragedy of war that some number of civilians are gonna get caught in the crossfire, they're gonna die, I get that. But look at these numbers, everyone. Look at these numbers. This is not a regular war. Anyone who tells me or anyone else that they are doing what it takes to protect civilians as they go after Hamas, I'm not stupid and I don't like having my intelligence insulted by people who are literally carrying out ethnic cleansing in Gaza right now. And I'm gonna say it, it's ethnic cleansing. How, how can you deny it? With that said, I want you to actually listen to a, a, more of the context featuring Wolf Blitzer and the IDF spokesperson. This is Richard Hetch that he's talking to. The flippant answers to what Wolf Blitzer, who is very like a huge proponent of the Israeli government of Israel, just pay close attention to it because it tells you everything you need to know about the ideology and the mentality of the IDF as they're going after Hamas and protecting civilians as much as they can. Let's watch. But even if that Hamas commander was there amidst all those Palestinian refugees who are in that in that Jabalia refugee camp, Israel still went ahead and dropped a bomb there, attempting to kill this Hamas 
uh, this Hamas, Hamas commander, knowing that a lot of innocent civilians, men, women, and children, presumably would be killed? Is that what I'm hearing? That's not what you're hearing, Wolf. We, again, were focused on this commander, again, who you'll get more data who this man was. Uh, killed many, many Israelis. Uh, we're doing everything we can. These are, it's a very complicated battle space. There could be infrastructure there. There could be tunnels there. Uh, we're still looking into it, and we'll give you more data as the hour moves ahead. But you know that there are a lot of refugees, a lot of innocent civilians, men, women, and children in that refugee camp as well, right? This is the tragedy of war, Wolf. I mean, we, as you know, we've been saying for days, move south. Civilians that are not involved with Hamas, please move south. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to get a little we, bit more information. Uh, you knew there were civilians there. You knew there were refugees, all sorts of refugees. But you decided to still drop a bomb on that refugee camp attempting to kill the Hamas commander. By the way, was he killed? I can't confirm yet. I'll, there'll be more uh, updated. He, yes, we know that he was killed. That was quick. I mean, that was quick. Uh, I can't confirm. Oh, yes, 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 he was killed. <laughs> Seems a little fishy. Hold on, Jenk. But one other thing I want to mention. He keeps saying, well, I mean, we keep telling them to go, go, go south, go south, get out of the north, go south. We're going to bomb the hell out of the north and get a load of this. The Israeli Defense Forces said Tuesday, meaning today, that it was striking in all parts of the Gaza Strip, despite warning residents to move south for shelter. And by the way, we already knew that. We already knew they were doing that, okay? But it's good to have the confirmation from the IDF. So he justifies bombing a refugee camp with civilians, including children, justifies it by saying, well, we told them, I mean, we told them to go south. We told them to go south. I mean, it's complete and utter dog crap. Okay. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to use an analogy here that is apt, and I wish it weren't so. The Turkish government, or back then the Ottoman Empire, told the Armenians to move south because they were going to kill people in the north. And then they marched them south, and that's what we call the Armenian genocide today. You don't just move millions of people and then massacre them on the way. That's called a genocide. So. When you kill 13 members of Hamas and 8,000 civilians, don't tell me that you're not trying to target civilians. It is totally not credible. It is obvious. I'm gonna say it, I don't care how many people in power catch feelings over it, I don't care. Our job is to be honest with you and bring you the truth. Israel is obviously targeting civilians on purpose. No military is this incompetent that you only kill 13 terrorists and 8,000 civilians. Are they the world's worst military? Oh, We just bungled again and again we dropped bombs and killed thousands and thousands of civilians. Oops, now I don't believe you. The only people in the world that believe you are powerful people in Washington, congratulations. Congratulations, you have them by your side. You have no one else, no one else believes that. Everyone knows you're killing the civilians on purpose. Yes, that's what terrorists do. I, I'm sorry that that hurts your feelings, but it doesn't change facts. The facts are there's no question in the world, Israel is killing those civilians on purpose. Imagine losing Wolf Blitzer. And, and I, I mean, wanna... Wolf, Wolf Blitzer, I'm sorry, but the man who couldn't ask a follow up question if his life depended on it repeatedly asked the same question to that IDF spokesperson. Three times he asked the same question. He could not. Wolf Blitzer, you lost Wolf Blitzer. Yeah. Imagine being so extreme in what you're carrying out that you have lost a member of the corporate media who has. Historically, throughout his entire career, provided cover for the war crimes that the IDF has committed. You lost him. Yeah, and so let me tell you why and why that's so important. And, and this guy's, this is just as important as anything else I'm gonna tell you. Wolf Blitzer and Jake Tapper happen to be Jewish Americans, okay? And look at them doing the right thing. And looking them, look at them aggressively challenging the IDF and the Israeli government. This is not about religion, this is not about ethnicity. 
This is not about Jews. Do not ever, ever, ever make the mistake of thinking, oh, this is about Jews or Jewish thing, etc. It is not. It is a power dynamic. Unfortunately, for human beings, whoever's more powerful crushes those who are less powerful. I hate that fact about humanity. And yes, if the situation was reversed, the Palestinians would do it to the Israelis. But we're not asking for the situation to be reversed. We're asking for two states that make a peace deal. Oh, that can never happen. You're wrong. It's a 100% fact that it can happen. It already did happen. And not just in a faraway land, in Israel. They made a deal with their worst enemy, Egypt. And since then, they have had over 40 years of peace with Egypt. More war gets you more war. More death gets you more death. Peace gets you stability and an ally instead of an enemy. This isn't about Jews or Muslims. This is about power dynamics. And Israel right now is powerful and and in their arrogance, they think it doesn't matter if we kill them. Because we're powerful and we have America behind us and we could do anything we want. Well, you're wrong about that. And now you've lost Jews in America who are wonderful, decent people who are saying, no, not in my name. Not in my name, do not do that. And you've lost other people and you've lost the whole world. Fire Netanyahu today, if Israel is a democracy, act like a democracy. Get rid of this, this thug, this guy who revels in killing innocent civilians. And get a decent moral leader that makes a peace deal so that Israel can be safe and the Palestinians can have dignity and have their lives back. Thanks for watching. If you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for, of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.